here because the outside world rejects you. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another video. We're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the Comic-Con panel news that recently came out from San Diego Comic-Con. There's a bunch of figures news as well, but we're going to go ahead and jump into the panels news first. First up, let's take a look at the Mutant Mayhem one. They had the director of the movie, Jeff Rowe, there to talk about the movie. And if you look over here on Comic Book Resources Twitter, they kind of broke down what happened in the panel. They say that the panel opened up with a clip from the movie featuring the turtles as action figures. So it's probably that Barbie turtle crossover video we saw posted by the official accounts a few days ago. Let's keep going here. Then it says, next, the moderators introduced a video featuring Kevin Eastman, Seth Rogen, and cast members discussing the legacy of the franchise. Let's keep going here. Then it says that they played a pre-recorded video from Seth Rogen and Ice Cube to introduce a sneak peek at the movie. Then apparently they showed 20 minutes of footage that followed the turtles as they snuck into the city to procure groceries before staying out late to watch Ferris Bueller's day off at the park so yeah that sounds familiar it sounds like those clips that they've been releasing of the turtles out going to get supplies looks like they go see a movie after that which also makes sense from a clip here we'll play at the end that they released Let's keep going here. The next post says it's also revealed that Splinter taught the Turtles martial arts with old Jackie Chan movies and exercise tapes. So yeah, a little meta there with Jackie Chan actually playing Splinter. Pretty cool. Then it says that the footage also featured a scene where the Turtles meet April O'Neil and fight to return her scooter. So yeah, it looks like that's how they meet her. It looks like she gets her scooter stolen probably and they go get it back. Then it says that Kevin Eastman joined the panel to thank Jeff Rowe for making a beautiful movie that reminds him of the underground comic style that Peter Laird and him started. Then we got a big announcement here from Eastman as he announced that Nickelodeon and Paramount have secured the rights to broadcast the original 1987 Ninja Turtle show. He said thank you to Nickelodeon and Paramount that they've been such a great home for the Turtles. Then there's a few other things here. They ended the panel by putting on the Ninja Turtle bandanas and taking a selfie. And yeah, that's pretty much like all the big stuff that went down. Pretty cool that the attendants got to see 20 minutes of the film. That's awesome. Now, soon after the panel, they released this new clip here of the Turtle sneaking back in from that movie, you can go ahead and check it out right here. Now, there were some other Mutant Mayhem things at Comic-Con. You could see that they had the Pizza Hut Mutant Mayhem van stationed with like a whole Mutant Mayhem setup too. That looked pretty rad. They also had the Mutant Mayhem booth, which looks like was on the floor. So anybody could check that out. That was there. Looks like they even had the turtles come out and stuff. And it does look like the director, Jeff Rowe and Kevin Eastman both showed up to do autographs at the booth. They also had Bear Walker there, who's known for doing art on skateboard decks. And apparently he had a Mutant Mayhem one he did and was there at the con signing them and stuff. Now let's move on over to the other Ninja Turtles panel that they had going on this weekend. And that was the comics panel. And there were some things announced here. Let's start off with the big one here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution was announced. And you could see it right there. The new Ronin Turtles are all grown up and they look badass. You can see that the Escorza brothers are returning to do art on this book. And they even posted about it saying, baby, we are back. The Last Ronin 2 Re-Evolution. And you could see that they showed that photo there before it was colored. Now, if you look at the photo, yeah, you could see all the new Ronin Turtles are there and they all seem to be wielding like the same mix of weapons that the original Last Ronin used to carry. You can see that they all have like a sword, a scythe, some nunchucks. I feel like that's a cool idea as that was kind of like the iconic look of the last Ronin is him carrying all those weapons. So for them all to do it here is like a cool way to tie that all together. But yeah, last Ronin 2 coming soon, but that wasn't the only bit of comic book news. Let's jump on over to the Ninja Turtles ongoing IDW series. You can see that they're going to be doing something called the untold destiny of the Foot Clan. And in this one, it was announced that Eric Burnham will be doing the writing and the art will be done by Matteo Santaluco, which is great news to hear. I know a lot of people are big fans of his. Apparently this is being called a spiritual successor to the secret of the Foot Clan, which was another miniseries that they did a while back. And yeah, this untold destiny of the Foot Clan new miniseries will be starring Karai. And you can see some of the new photos there that show her. It also shows Casey Jones with a new mask with the Foot Clan logo on it. And then you can see some of the other characters there as well. Now let's move on over to the Saturday Morning Adventures comics. The Saturday Morning Adventures Ninja Turtles comic will be having a Halloween special. You can see there they released some of the covers there. But yeah, pretty cool. Not much else on this one. But that about does it for the panel news. Let's go ahead and jump over to the figures and collectibles and see what was revealed. 
All right, so we've gotten a new look at some upcoming NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. These are coming out of Comic-Con and they've done a bunch of new figures. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at them and they're from the different Turtles lines. You'll have some from The Last Ronin, some from the movies, some from the old Mirage comics and some new ones as well from the 1987 show. Let's go ahead and just dive into this and look at this all. You can see this is coming from the toyark.com. Looks like they're there at the event and they've recently posted all the new photos of the new figures here on their site. Let's start off with The Last Ronin ones. You can see here, there's one of a Raphael but it doesn't look like the Raphael that's recently launched. It's similar, but this one is covered in blood and has a bunch of arrows stabbed into him. This is during his fight with Karai. He gets like this at one point in the story. So yeah, this just looks like a different variant on the Raphael figure. Uh, then next we have this Michelangelo figure here, a flashback Michelangelo. You can see him there still wearing the orange bandana and he has his nunchucks, which look like holster into his chest plate there. That looks pretty sick. Let's keep going here. Next up, they revealed this Donatello from the last Ronin. You can see him right there in his attire from those flashbacks scenes where he goes to Japan with Master Splinter. And speaking of Master Splinter, you can see he will be getting a figure as well. And you can see him there. It looks just like he does in the comics. All right, next up, we have the reveal of Casey Jones from The Last Ronin. You can see him right there with the short hair like he has in the comic. He's carrying that sledgehammer that he uses to smash the footbots, which you also see a new figure of right there. That one was revealed a couple days ago, but we haven't talked about that one yet here either. And yeah, just overall looks great. Next up, we have Fugitoid from The Last Ronin comics. And you can see him right there. He's battle damaged just like he is in the book. Pretty cool looking figure there. But let's go ahead and move on over to the Mirage figures now. You can see right there the new Savanti Romero that was recently revealed a couple days ago. Looks good. Next up, Baxter Stockman looks like we'll be getting a figure as well. You can see him there with like a little miniature building in his hand and then like an old school computer down there on the floor. That looks cool. Looks like he'll be coming with a mouser. And yeah, just super faithful to the comics. Looks great here. Next up, we have the Rat King. Looks super creepy like he does in those old Mirage comics. You can see him right there coming through the sewers. Love this look here for the Rat King. Probably one of my favorites when it comes to the character. And lastly, when it comes to the Mirage figures, this one here is actually coming from Fush VB on Twitter. And you can see it right there. It's a Mirage Comics Leatherhead. And Leatherhead looks great here. Super cool that they're doing him. Next, let's move on over to the movies. You can see they'll be doing some new Secret of the Ooze figures. Let's kind of just take a look at one at a time here. It looks like they're gonna be doing foot soldiers and they look very similar to the first movie's foot soldiers that they've already done. But just like with the movies, there are some slight differences here with the design. But not only that, behind those foot soldiers, you can see another couple new figures and one's of Raphael when he's tied up to that phone pole tape around his mouth, a super iconic scene from the movie. And the other is of a Professor Perry action figure. Yes, we're gonna be getting Professor Perry in action figure form. You you can see there's a couple different variations of him. First one here is of him in the orange jumpsuit when he's like walking around doing the news interviews and stuff in the movie. And then they have him there in his like regular lab coat and stuff, which is his regular outfit that he wears throughout the entire movie. Then next to him, you could see another new figure right there and it's Kino, but this is a different version of Kino that was recently revealed for the line. This is the version of him when he's training with the Foot Clan trying to infiltrate. And it looks like he'll be coming in a pack with the Foot Soldier. And it looks like that big Foot Soldier, that Michelangelo headbutts in the stomach in the movie. Yeah, super cool. All of these just say coming soon. I haven't seen any dates on these, but yeah, pretty cool seeing all these new figures coming here. And there's one final one here for the secret of the use. Obviously, we've seen the Shredder before, but if you see right there, they're going to be releasing the Shredder's throne, which is made out of a bunch of junk from the junkyard. And yeah, if you've seen like set photos and stuff from the movie, you know, it was just like this. Super cool that they thought of this. But yeah, when it comes to the secret of the use figures, I believe that is all the new stuff there. I like the tire wall diorama there in the background. I wonder if they're ever going to release something like that. That'd be cool. But yeah, let's move on over to the next line, which has some new figures revealed for it. All right, here we're taking a look at their Ninja Turtles Universal Monsters crossover figures, and they have revealed some new figures for this line as well. Let's take a look at those. First up, you have Werewolf Raphael. You can see him right there. Looks pretty cool. And this is pretty interesting because if you look right behind them, you can see that they already did a figure with Raphael, and that was for the Frankenstein Raphael. I wonder if each turtle is going to get two characters, because as we can see in the next figure, Leonardo has also gotten a new character. First, he was the Hunchback, and now he's gotten like like a creature from the Black Lagoon crossover figure. You can see him right there. And this one's got a lot of texture, a lot of details. But yeah, it looks like they're gonna be getting second characters that they'll cross over with. We'll see if they do Michelangelo and Donatello next. But yeah, pretty cool to see this line keep growing. I didn't think they were gonna keep going. I thought it was done. Or that they were gonna go to other Turtles characters like the Shredder and stuff. It's interesting that they circled back around to the Turtles. Let me know down below what you think of these. But let's keep going here. Now we're moving on over to the 1987 TV show line. And you can see some new Usagi variants there. He's wearing different outfits and stuff 
stuff that we haven't seen them in before. So those are some new ones there. Then they showed off these and you can see that it's the punk turtles from the show and they got the sunglasses and their jackets and sneakers. You can see right there that it's going to be a four pack and these look terrific. I really love the detail that NECA puts into these. We have some more figures here like Rex. You have this massive praying robot, which if you see it there, it's bigger than like the diorama there. Like it's taller than it. This thing looks huge. I'm not sure about the actual measurements on it, but yeah, this thing is massive. So yeah, that's a new one there. And yeah, there you can see the turtles again. It says ultimate Leonardo. So it looks like the turtles may be coming out again. Then you have the turtle van there with April driving it. Then down here, we can see some more new figures. We have one of Casey Jones, but he's wearing like a suit. Looks good. Now there was also some new Ninja Turtles Archie comics figures that were shown. Let's go over some of those. The biggest ones had to be the wrestling turtles from the Archie comics. And you can see them right there. And it's just wild to think we're getting these. Back in the day, I don't think in a million years, anybody would have thought we would be getting figures of these. But it's not the only new Archie figures that were shown. You can see right there, there's Mondo Gecko from the Archie comics, as well as Belly Bomb. But let's move on over to the last couple collectibles and figures that were shown there at the event. First up, we have this Diamond Select Last Ronin bust here, which looks incredible. You can see it right there. It's a one half scale bust, 10 inches tall. Looks like you could go ahead and pre-order it already on the Diamond Select website. And just, wow, this is an incredible bust here that I know a lot of people are gonna be excited for. Next, we move on over to Mezco Toys. You can see that they revealed this one over here and it's a Casey Jones 112 figure. And it looks fantastic. I love this style of mask for Casey Jones. You can see the little detail there on the material of his vest. What do you guys think about this one here? I think it's pretty sweet. And that about does it. But yeah, I thought I'd show them off just in case you happen to miss those. But yeah, that seems about it here for the new figures that they displayed there at Comic-Con. What do you guys think? I think my favorite stuff is probably the Secret of the Ooze stuff. Those original movies, they just have a special place in my heart. And I like seeing anytime they do figures on that stuff. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Super cool that this is all coming out. But that does it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. Remember to subscribe if you're new to catch more videos like this in your life all we cover is new old and upcoming turtle stuff following all the socials links are down below in the description and i will see you all in a little bit with another video take care